About a year ago, we decided to build our very own protogen fursuit from scratch. But there was a problem. I had never built a protogen before, and I don't really quite know what I'm doing. Hi, my name is Waffles, and in the last episode we went ahead and finished the visor, and in this episode we're going to go ahead and tackle the electronics. There is a problem, however. The original electronics designed for this head won't work at all, so we're going to have to build and design something totally new. This is something I've been most excited about since the beginning of this project, and in theory it should make a protogen look really cool. At its core, a protogen's face is two parts. The physical hardware, the screen, the wires, the computer running it, and then the software running on top of all of that. The plan is, we're going to get some LED matrices and then somehow hook them up to a Raspberry Pi. Then, all we need to do is find some code out there to display a face on our display. But, before we can do that, we first need to knock out a few loose ends. The first small task we're going to knock out is adjusting some of the foam we added in the previous episode. In order to make sure the fur looks good, we need to make sure that the transition between the neck and the foam is smooth. Adding a little bit extra foam here will help make sure things look nice and smooth when we inevitably add the fur on top. Next, I did some slight tweaks to where the visor attaches to the head. We have the problem where there's a little bit of a gap between it and the head, so I've gone ahead and glued a strip of felt to help remove any gaps. Also, this helps remove any vibrations and in general just makes it fit a lot more snug. The first bit of electronics we're going to add is another fan mounted on the inside of the chin. This fan has a 90 degree bend in it, meaning that it's going to suck up air from the bottom and then blow it towards your face. After a few slight modifications and adjustments, we can go ahead and glue it inside of the head. This should help create some good cross airflow between the fans we've already added and keep both you and the electronics cool. When learning a new skill, there are no magic tricks to getting good. Oftentimes, the best way to learn is just to dive in and soak it all up. We're standing on the shoulders of giants, there are so many great tutorials out there and a ton of great examples online. Hopefully, if you want to build your own protogen, this will be another good example that you can use to build something cool. In order to give our protogen a brain, we're going to start with our Raspberry Pi. A Raspberry Pi, for those who don't know, is a tiny, powerful computer that works just like a laptop or desktop, except it's really tiny. Using a laptop just to run some LEDs might sound like it's overkill, and honestly it kind of is, but it makes the software side of things a lot easier. There are a ton of different LED displays out there. For our head, we're going to use these Adafruit LED matrices. These displays pack a ton of LEDs into a small area, can change any color, and support dynamic updating. More importantly, they can easily be hooked up to our Raspberry Pi using a connector. The plan is, we're going to use this controller board that should allow our Pi to talk to these matrices displays. The first thing that we're going to build is the power supply. This will give us 5 volt power from the wall and make testing everything a lot easier. To start out, we're going to go ahead and strip the power cable that came with the display board. Then we're going to go ahead and plug that into a female DC power adapter, making sure that the red cable is plugged into the positive terminal. Eventually, we'll still need to figure out how to attach batteries to all of this, but for now, this whole system will work great. Now we can go ahead and start connecting everything together, starting with the power supply cable we just made. Next, we're going to need to send data to our displays using these chunky ribbon cables that connect them to the Pi. The ribbon cables are connected into a part called the bonnet, which is pressed into the Pi just like a giant Lego block. Remember, the Pi is just a tiny computer, so we're going to need to connect a keyboard, a mouse, and monitor to see what it's actually doing. Finally, we can go ahead and give our tiny computer friend some power. After an afternoon of troubleshooting and putting everything together, we can finally say that a Raspberry Pi is working and hooked up. For right now, I just have it running the default Pi OS, but that's going to be more than powerful enough for what we need. It's hooked up to the internet, and the only thing we have to do left now is install the software that's going to run on a protogen. If you've never used Linux before, just think of it as the dark souls of computers. In order for our displays to actually do anything, we're going to go ahead and use a program called RPI RGB LED Matrix. It's a mouthful. Our first task is to go ahead and install the software and get it working using a test image. Next, inside of our terminal, we're first going to go ahead and create a new folder and then navigate into it. 
Then we can use git to clone the RPI RGB files onto our computer. If you've never used the terminal before, you end up feeling like a cool hacker man when all you're really doing is creating folders and downloading files. Next, we can go ahead and navigate inside of the code we just downloaded and then compile it using the make command. The only code we're really focused on here is the LED image viewer code inside of the utilities folder. I'm also including a guide by Raspberry Valley that I used to help us getting the software working, and it's really helpful. Now, running the code can theoretically render any image to the screens. Now comes the fun part. Our pile of electronics can display any image we send it, so the next step is to simply draw out a Progen's face and then upload it to our program. The first few attempts didn't go quite perfectly, but after an afternoon of playing out the settings, we finally got something that looked pretty good. Woohoo! Now, the only thing we have left to do here is to hook up the second display, and then we should be all done. These matrix displays support chaining right out of the box, so the only thing we need to do is plug them in and give them power. I duplicated and flipped over our face image to get a mirrored copy of it and then uploaded that to a Raspberry Pi. Ooh, YouTube chat, what do you think of the face we've given our protogen? Now, this isn't the final version or anything, but I think it serves as a pretty cool proof example of what we can do. I'm really happy with how it's turning out, even if it was kind of a huge pain in the butt to make. There are still a ton of tweaks and edits and changes I wanna make down the road. For example, one small thing that I kinda of wanna change is that right now these are just rendering a photo but it should be fairly easy to make them render a video instead. That means we could do something like blinking animations or have the phase move. There are a ton of different cool possibilities for the future. Now, there is one small problem. The original visor that came with this head a long time ago isn't gonna work. It was made for like a completely different system with different screens and wires, and we're gonna have to replace it if we wanted our system to work at all. The next major thing that we need to do in order to finish our protogen is to figure out how in the world we're going to mount these screens inside our head. So I've been doing some thinking on how we're going to solve the problem of mounting our displays, and I think I've come up with a pretty good solution. The first thing that I did was create a cardboard template, and I did this just to kind of rough out our shapes and to make sure that everything was going to fit ahead of time. Now, it sucks that we have to completely remake this visor piece from scratch, but one good thing is that the notches, if you can kind of see them here, we can reuse to mount our visor. Now, it's not perfect, but as you see, it gives us two pretty good points of contact that we can use to mount our screen. The only thing we need to do now is figure out how we're gonna mount this on the bottom and get it all glued in place. So the next thing that we're gonna do is come up with some cardboard template pieces to figure out what this is gonna look like and then glue it all together. Whenever I need to make something, and I don't know how, I start by making a cardboard template. You can use it to get a good general idea of what the shapes are going to be before moving on to your more expensive materials. A handy trick is to use a cardboard jig to glue the plastic onto the displays. This prevents the hot glue from getting on the front of the screens and helps to make sure everything is nice and even. Making sure things are symmetrical when it's glued into the head is incredibly important. If they're off center even by a little bit, people will notice and there won't be any real way to fix it. Finally, we can go ahead and glue everything in, making sure to go slow and waiting for each layer to dry before moving on. Last, all we need to do is hook all the electronics back up and then turn it back on. Fun fact, most people don't know this. When it comes to protogen suits, you actually look through the top section up here. And what I mean by that is if you remove the visor, because the screens block so much of your vision, you actually see through this top triangle piece up here. It's one of the reasons why protogens have this like angled head down look. 
is because they look to this top section. Most people don't know that, it's a cool little fun fact, but I thought I'd at least point it out to you. So now that we've gotten our displays finished, I think we're at a really good stopping point for this episode. Now, don't get me wrong, we still have a ton of work to do. Next episode, I wanna focus on attaching this circle piece, doing the wire management, and figuring out where in the world we're gonna put our Raspberry Pi. Because right now, there's not a lot of room in the episodes, so that's gonna be a pretty big challenge that we're gonna have to overcome. Also, I have a question for you, YouTube chat. What in the world are we gonna call this protogen? I don't have a good name picked out, and I figured if you've made it to the very end of this video, you probably care a lot more than the average person, so go ahead and put your suggestions in the comment section below. Also, while you're down there, go ahead and give this video a like, and check if you're subscribed. Liking this video is something that's free that you can do to help show your support, and it helps me out immensely when it comes to finishing this project. So with all that being said, I appreciate you guys' support so much, and I can't wait to see you guys again next episode. Thank you.